I have to admit that when it comes to tech, I'm not much of a tinkerer these days. I used to really get into that kind of thing, but these days, I just want my stuff to work. I've got an iPhone, I've got a Mac, I've got an iPad. For the most part, everything just works the way that I want it to. But I'm really happy that Valve made the Steam Deck an open platform. When I first got my Steam Deck, I decided I was gonna have it as vanilla as possible. And there were actually a couple of reasons for that. Reason number one was, like I said before, I just want stuff to work. And I'm a newbie when it comes to Linux, so I was worried about doing something that would wreck everything. Number two is I wanted to be able to talk about the Steam Deck in a way that most people would probably experience. I totally understand that there's tons of people out there that build their own PCs and understand the ins and outs of everything that's running under the hood on those PCs. They know when they've got a bottleneck at the CPU or when they've got a bottleneck at the GPU or why they need to have this much RAM for this program. But I feel like there's far more people out there who like just buy a gaming laptop or they end up picking up a pre-built desktop because they don't wanna worry about any of that other stuff. They don't wanna think about what's under the hood. They just wanna buy a game and be able to play it. And neither way of doing PC gaming is better than the other. But I really wanted to spend my initial time with the Steam Deck talking to the people who just want stuff to work. Well, it's been a while now. And I think it's time that we all step out of our comfort zone and try out some plugins for the Steam Deck. Now, the first thing that we're going to have to do is install Decky Loader. You don't have to install Decky Loader, but it definitely makes the whole process easier. And speaking of trying to make the process easier, you're gonna want a mouse and a keyboard for this portion. You don't have to, but it's kind of a pain to do this without a mouse and a keyboard. I recommend the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse and the Keychron K4 keyboard. The reason I recommend these two uh, devices is because both of them are Bluetooth and both of them can connect to multiple devices at the same time. So on my desk, I have one keyboard and one mouse and it connects to my Mac, my PC, and my Steam Deck, and I can swap between them all with just a couple of button pushes. It's really awesome and makes using desktop mode on the Steam Deck really easy. For step one, we wanna head into desktop mode. In order to get there, you're either gonna hold down the power button or press the Steam button and navigate down to the power menu. Once you do that, you're going to press the button that says switch to desktop mode. Once you're on your desktop, go ahead and open up your web browser. The Steam Deck comes pre-installed with Firefox, I think, but you can use any of them. And head to the link in the description down below. Once you're there, there's a big download button. Go ahead and click that. And I suggest that you save this to your desktop or to the downloads folder, just so that it's easier to find later. Go ahead and open up Dolphin, which is the file manager on KDE Plasma, the Steam Deck's desktop. Go to wherever you saved that file and run the file that was just downloaded. If you have an admin password, you're going to have to type it at this point. If not, Decky will set the password to Decky exclamation point. That's capital D E C K Y exclamation point. You can always change this later if you want to. Decky Loader will now ask you which version you want to install. I'm gonna suggest that if you're watching this video, you should probably just stick with the latest release and not the pre-release stuff. Just like Valve has three channels for updates for the Steam Deck, the stable channel, the beta channel, and the preview channel, Decky Loader has multiple channels as well. The most stable version is the latest release and the beta version is basically pre-release. Stay away from the pre-release unless you know what you're doing. Once that's finished loading, go ahead and double click on the return to gaming mode icon that's automatically on the desktop of KDE Plasma. Okay, now that we're back in gaming mode, all you have to do in order to bring up Decky Loader is press the quick access menu. Down at the very bottom, you're going to see a brand new icon that you never saw before that looks like a plug. Navigate down to there. That's where Decky lives. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a gear icon, and on the right-hand side, you're going to see a store. Quick note, they do call it a store, but as far as I can see, everything on here is free. If I find that that's changed at some point in the future, I will update the description below this video so that you can know that ahead of time. The gear menu is on the left, and it's where you can go to update to the latest version of Decky Loader. It's also where you can go to delete any plugins that you decided that you don't want. 
or if you want to easily load plugins via a manual install by pasting a URL into that box. In the store, you can see the available plugins that are integrated into Decky Loader. There's lots of plugins that are not integrated into Decky Loader, and for me, I'm just going to wait until they do integrate with Decky Loader. Each one will have a description that tells you what it does, as well as some tags. Now, some of these tags are really, really important. Let's talk about root. Root means this plugin requires root access to your machine. Root access is basically like saying, you've got the keys to the house and you can do whatever you want. And as somebody who is new to Linux, if this plugin does something with its root access and I don't know how to fix it, then I am probably screwed. So I don't give anything root access because I'm a newbie. But hey, if you're not a newbie, you're probably not watching this video anyway. So what plugins am I currently using? Overall, some fairly simple ones and not anything crazy. Let's start off with Proton DB badges. Now, Steam Deck already has its own verification system that Valve uses. This is the little green check mark, the little yellow icon, the unsupported icon, and the unknown icon. These are great because they tell you whether or not a game's going to run okay on the Steam Deck. However, a lot of people have said that these aren't necessarily accurate and that ProtonDB is a better uh, indicator of whether or not a game is going to run okay on the Steam Deck. At the same time, there's other people that complain that ProtonDB isn't super up to date or isn't necessarily catered to the Steam Deck. And both people make valid arguments. So I figure why not use both and use that to help me make decisions. So if you wanna know how some games are going to run on the Steam Deck, check out this plugin. If a game lists as platinum, that means that the game is going to run perfectly with no tweaking needed. Gold needs a few tweaks. Silver has minor issues, but for the most part, you should be all set. Bronze is going to have a bunch of crashes and Borked means don't even bother. Now these ratings are based on Proton, not necessarily on Steam Deck. And there's a lot of Linux machines out there that run Proton. You don't have to use Steam Deck and Steam OS in order to run Proton. So this does not take into account whether or not the font looks good on the Steam Deck. It doesn't take into account the limited controls that you have on the Steam Deck. If a game simply is completely unplayable without mouse and keyboard, that's not going to be indicated on ProtonDB. That's why I feel like it's good to use both ProtonDB and Steam Deck's verification system when you're trying to make decisions about which games get to take up that precious, precious storage on your Steam Deck. I also really wish that ProtonDB had little icons in the store. I understand that that's probably impossible, but it would be so much better than just showing it in your library. But on the other hand, you can always just go to ProtonDB's website. It's free and it's right there. And I don't shop on the Steam Deck. I usually shop from my computer and then install on my Steam Deck afterwards. Let's move on to Steam Grid DB. This is really cool. There are tons and tons of artists out there who have made fantastic alternate, uh, what's the box art? Alternate box art for the games on Steam. And they're all hosted over at Steam uh, steamgrid.db. Well, with this plugin, you can easily go into any game and change all of the art that shows up in your library in order to make it exactly the way that you want. I think that this is fantastic, and I used it in order to update the art for my Xbox games on the Steam Deck because I tried to follow Microsoft's guide and it didn't work. So this made it easy to replace that blank gray icon that said Xbox Cloud Gaming with an actual Xbox Cloud Gaming icon. Next up is HLTB for deck. HLTB is a website that I have been using for years. I'm an old man. I don't have time for long games. If your game says that it has hundreds of hours of gameplay, that is not something that entices me, that scares me away, because I know that I just don't have the attention span for it. So 
howlongtobeat.com is a website that I've been going to for years to make a decision on whether or not I wanted to pick up a game or if I wanted to pass on something because I knew it just had way too much content for me. And there's other people who are the opposite of me. They only want these huge 100 hour epics and they're uninterested in games that are five to 10 hours. And there's nothing wrong with that. HLTB is awesome on the Steam Deck because it automatically puts right on your library how long it's gonna take to beat a game, both from a just you mainline the story or if you want to be a completionist. This plugin might not be a must have for everybody, but for me, it absolutely is. It means I don't have to go to a secondary website. This next one I just installed today and I think it's gonna be really useful. It's called Share Decky. What it does is it looks at your library and tells you how other people have certain games running. So if you want to extend your battery life or get the best performance out of a game, you can find out what other people have done in order to do that without all the experimentation yourself. Here you can see that others are getting up to three hours of playtime with Crisis Core using the high graphics preset and limiting the refresh rate and frame rates of the Steam Deck to 40, then lowering the TDP of the Steam Deck to 10 watts. By the way, if you wanna check out my review of Crisis Core, link in the description down below. Now, last up is the one that everybody has told me about a million times, and that's Vibrant Deck. The Steam Deck is a fantastic machine with a middle of the road screen. This screen is fine, but it's never gonna compare to an OLED screen. Overall, people feel like the Steam Deck screen is a little bit washed out, and I don't necessarily disagree, but it never really bothered me. Vibrant Deck allows you to change the saturation of your Steam Deck's screen just like you would with the remote control on your TV, and you change how much, how much color you're getting on the screen. It's never gonna compare to an OLED screen, but it can look way better than the default. The thing that I like most about Vibrant Deck is that it's on a per game basis because some games look absolutely fine and others do look washed out. So if you're playing a game that looks a little bit washed out, you can boost the vibrancy or the uh, saturation of the colors in that particular game and it's not going to affect all of the other ones. I think that that's awesome. So those are my favorite plugins on the Steam Deck right now. Let me know what plugins you're running that you think are awesome. And speaking of awesome, thank you to these awesome people for supporting this channel. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.